I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. Virginia Historical Highway Marker at the foot of Israel Hill in Farmville, Virginia. The erection of the marker commemorating the citizens and location of Israel Hill. On Sunday, September 27, 2009, the Virginia Highway Historical Marker, Interstate 14A, Free Blacks of Israel Hill, was unveiled. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Israel Hill was settled in 1810 through 1811 by approximately 90 freed blacks who had received their freedom and several acres of land from Judith Randall, the widow of Richard Randall, who was the cousin of slaveholder Thomas Jefferson. Randall, who had directed this emancipation in his will, and the Randalls of the Cumberland County own Bazaar Plantation from which Israel Hill and the town of Farmingville grew. These former enslaved people established farms, navigated the Abermax River, and became entrepreneurs. Free blacks did business with people from all walks of life. They worked side by side with everyone and they fought for equal wages, joining forces to build a Baptist congregation. Slavery, however, cast its ugly shadow even over the lives of the free. Yet, on Israel Hill, it was discovered that a moving story of hardship and hope defied the expectations of the old South. Israel Hill was remarkable for several reasons. One of them was because these people became successful citizens who were the main Beto men of the Abramox River. The Beto men were the men who stirred the boats down the Abramox River, and they were responsible for the safety and lodging of the passengers on the boat. They were the captains of the boat. The men and women of Israel Hill, they dealt in real estate, they entered into business contracts with whites and other blacks who bought suits in court and who married and lived with their white neighbors, which was not common due to the outright racism during that time. All of the success was against the background of an unfair society that by the laws did not allow these free people to be counted as citizens, to enjoy the freedoms guaranteed to them as citizens, but that required them to carry identification papers to prove their freedom. One of the reasons that make this town so impressive is that it all occurred within 25 years after the completion of the Revolutionary War. This is another example of how we excel as people when we are simply just left alone. This community developed a commercial following so that once they were finally free, they already had their customer base well established. These businesses were blacksmithing, dairy and tobacco farming, carpentry, a general store, and all the same businesses found in America throughout any other community at that time. But it was not all smooth sailing after their freedom was documented because the rest of the South continued to rely quite heavily on slavery. There were times when a freed member of Israel Hill might have to buy his wife at an auction because she was still a slave.
or a father had to see his children sold off at an auction because his wife was still a slave. Unfortunately, during chattel slavery in this country, the children of the enslaved Hebrews were also subject to the same atrocities as their parents. Freed blacks also owned weapons, which initially caused no concern for their white neighbors, at least not until the Nat Turner Slave Revolt in 1831. Preacher Nat Turner led a revolt which he and other slaves killed many white inhabitants of their locality. When news of this reached Prince George County, there was suddenly concern that this could happen here. Guns were taken from the freed black community members for fear that they would be used to free the rest of the slaves in the country. However, white fear was unfounded and the revolt that they were anticipating never happened. Within a few years, the black community members were applying for and receiving licenses to own firearms once again. The former enslaved people of this community built homes and shops. They married. They even took on the white community when someone was less than honest with them, as was often the case. They pled their cases in court with white judges and white juries and just as frequently won their cases, all on the merits of the case. It was an amazing time in Prince Edward County, and the sites where all this occurred are still here under new commercial and residential growth. These freed Africans chose to call this settlement Israel Hill, because they knew who they were. They knew that they were the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. Further proof that many of the enslaved people of that time knew exactly who they were can be found in one of the oldest, if not the oldest black church in America, which can be found in Savannah, Georgia. When this church was erected by the black people at that time, it had Hebrew writing on the pews. Ladies and gentlemen, this is no coincidence. These people knew exactly who they were. The Bible says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. When you see movies like Roots, it always showed the Africans as being Muslims. Well, not according to the logs of the slave ships. They came over with Hebrew names that could be found on the logs of the slave ships with Hebrew writing. The logs on the slave ships, which can be found online, show that the Africans that were kidnapped from Africa came over with Hebrew names. Please look it up for yourself. And the overwhelming majority of Africans who were scattered throughout this world came from a place in Africa known at that time as Negro Land. You can find it on the 1700 maps. They were shipped from a place called the Kingdom of Wahuda, or the Kingdom of Judah. Again, it can be found on the 1700 maps. Anytime you see the Kingdom of Judah, or the Kingdom of Wahuda, or the Kingdom of Wahuda, Wahudi, that is where the Hebrews dwelt. Also known 
as the slave coast, the land of no return, all in the same place. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Negro land. Negro is not such a bad word after all. How is it that the flyers at that time proclaimed Hebos for sale, which is a derivative of Hebrews? So is Negro, by the way. Negro is a derivative for Hebrews. And many of the colonizers, if not all, knew exactly who they were putting on those slave ships. They were putting biblical Hebrew Israelites to be scattered throughout the world. Just like the Bible said. If my people, who are called by my name, would just humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. My people, called by my name, and the name of the Most High God, is Yahweh, Yah. So when you have names like Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Sarah, those are the names of God. My people, called by my name. The Most High, Yah's name. And many of us give our children Hebrew names without even realizing. It's in our spirit. a view of the first church erected by Africans with Hebrew writing. The fact of the matter is, many of us consider ourselves colored, black, African, African Americans, and so many other titles. But when you do the research, it will show through DNA, archaeology, history, biblical, and without the Bible, who we really are. And I'm asking everyone, please do not take my word for it. Do the research yourself. So, ladies and gentlemen, Israel Hill, which was established in 1810 through 1811 with free blacks who knew exactly who they were. Hebrew by blood, Israelite by nationality, African-American by slavery. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, Thou art rich.